Now we start uh, next uh, Zoom meeting of our uh, section, and we are going to start with um, pre uh, previous uh, <laughs> previous uh, meeting presentation uh, by Alena Kurapatik. Yes. And Viktor Shinkarenka, automation of template uh, formation to identify the structure of natural language documents. Uh, Elena? Yes, I am here and yes, I'm ready. Please. Mm -hmm. please share your presentation. Uh, in our work, we present the model of the process of forming a document template and the full version you can see on YouTube channel of conference. And now uh, I will skip some slide because we have a limited time. Uh, about our problem. Uh, when people write a work, they can borrow some X fragments they needed uh, for an explanation uh, their thought and um, when uh, we uh, find uh, borrowing text uh, we must uh, uh, mustn't check such fragments when uh, find borrowings and for this reason uh, we proposed to work with structured document it's uh, digital documents uh, by docdocx files format and uh, these type documents have structured features formatting title and alternative title of section subsection keywords uh, and another uh, for taking into account this structure we research of digital representation of document structure uh, we start from uh, uh, separate uh, some elements uh, uh, there are embedded header style properties of paragraph level properties of paragraph level which is determined by the style created by the user uh, and uh, etc after that um, we investigated uh, the document structure it uh, was document of Doc, docx format and we uh, find found special text uh, for mark the structure element uh, we research standard heading style with notation of the paragraph level without style and notation of level with style and uh, for this uh, all issue uh, we found a general solution we found a vague subsection uh, and um, based on this not so this subsection uh, we can um, uh, separate and, and identificate some structure units after that um, we used uml uh, to modeling uh, the process uh, of forming a document template uh, there are uh, several stage and after that um, uh, we definite a um, constructor it's a, a special concept for formalization our process uh, uh, the constructor include carrier signature and in, uh, formation construction support uh, and um, we used special operation uh, like a specification and then we definite a, a subject area for our constructor uh, and now the elements of carrier is terminals digital documents template section string title keywords xml document notes etc after that we determine operation for our models and for this operation we determined uh, uh, some uh, initial condition for construct and algorithms and uh, when we have this model 
we can start to develop uh, some software uh, for identification of structure elements and build template for documents. And uh, this process is very long and um, we have some stage, read documents, parsing the structure, build structure tree and created and restructured template and um, uh, first, second and third uh, stage now uh, is done and uh, today uh, we implement uh, this stage uh, for uh, complete uh, uh, all uh, operation for uh, build our templates. And um, uh, when we uh, performed uh, all of this stage, uh, we uh, can use this template uh, to identify it as a structure element and um, uh, we uh, can get a more accurate uh, assessment uh, of text uh, by some borrowed fr uh, fragments. Yes, of course, now we have a lot of future works, but uh, I think so now we have good result for continue our work. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, any question, please? Mm. I can ask you, what kind of XML document do you study? What, it's for every type or some kind of XML document? Uh, we research XML documents uh, for doc, uh, docx files. Uh, we can't uh, find some documentation uh, from Microsoft for these documents and we research it in manual uh, mode. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Do you have someone? No, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. And now we uh, have uh, next presentation. Alev uh, Krupi and Konstantin Kazyan. Yes, I am correct. As the authors of this presentation, a neural network based study of the performance of a developed foreign language uh, teaching system. Alev Krupi and Konstantin Kazin. No, uh, now we can uh, we can next presentation maybe. Uh, Dmitro Nazarenko, Irina Afanasiva, Natalia Golian, and Vira Golian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dmitro Nazarenko, right. please. We ask yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let me share my presentation first. Yes, of course. Uh, are you see? Do you yes, see? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Can see. Uh, good. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to participate in the conference with the article uh, in, about investigation of the deep learning approaches to classify motionless texts. We create this article together with Irina Afanasyeva, Natalia Galian, and Vera Galian, and my name is Dmitry Nazarenko. So, today there are a lot of textual information in, uh, around us. And the content of texts can be a useful resource for text mining to uncover a variety of issues that can be done with texts. For example, we can uh, extract emotions from the comments for some, uh, for some electronical shop, for some internet magazines or other stuff and decide whether the customers are like our product or dislike or they hate our product and so on and so on. 
and the emotion component in this case is very uh, could be very helpful for business and not only for business and for other researchers the emotion recognition approaches and sentiment analysis that uh, that is working with these emotion components are divided for some types. The first type is Kivo based approach and uh, the, this approach is relies on finding occurrences of keywords in a given text and assign an emotion label based on the detected keyword. So it's, that's why it's keyword based. The next one is a classical learning based. It's just machine learning stuff. And for example, we can uh, remember one of the most popular algorithm about classification It's support vector machines that is used uh, for classification, not only uh, images, but also it can be used in text for emotion recognition. And the last one is deep learning. It is uh, uh, it is the latest researches. It is one of the modern uh, approach, one of the most uh, modern approaches in a in a question of textual researches of emotional recognition and other recognition. So, in our article, we investigate the state of the art of the deep learning approaches and trying to understand which is the best one. So to start with, we investigate the other solutions that were made before. And the first one is, uh, it was done by a Chinese professor Wang, and it used a convolutional neural network to detect emotions in text. The tests that were used uh, for testing this neural network uh, they will use the Chinese block data set and uh, the emotion analysis in Chinese Weibo text in 2014 data set. Uh, the architecture of the, uh, of the model is uh, CNN, Convolutional Neural Network, and it, it was shown that it outperforms strong baselines and achieves excellent efficiency with the aid of word embedding. So the main uh, points are CNN and word embedding. And the F score metric is uh, over 60 points. The next one is a May Sherry and Day uh, solution in, in 2018. And they were used pre trained embedding with two parallel architectures based on BLST. They were used GLOVE and other embedding. And the accuracy will. Uh, almost 60 points and in the summer wall the uh, in summer wall competition they uh, came in second position with their model the third one was in 2019 and it was based on the big rule with embedding with uh, fa that was based on a fast text pre-trained embedding and the F score was 63 points on CrowdFlow data set. So based on these researches, we decided to choose the baseline architectures to experiment, to come to make compressions with. The first one was BLSTM and it is uh, a sequence processing model based on the RNN models uh, recurrent to neural network. And uh, the LSTM basically used forget gate, input gate, output gate. It is just a deep, uh, deep architecture of the LSTM. And BLSTM, it is like uh, side by side. It has a backward layer, it has a forward layer, and it helps uh, helps to process text as forward as backward propagation. Not propagation, just reading text forward and backward. Uh, the next one is a big rule. It's uh, kind of similar with BLSTM, but uh, it's more light, lightweight and it has only two gate, update gate and reset gate. And uh, it is also useful for, as it is more fast way to make classification than BLSTM and let's see the results of this models. And, and the third one was CNN, and so you know that this convolutional neural network that we uh, used for mostly for classification images, but it also used for 
texts and also in in the context of emotion recognition. So we create three models, BLSTAR model, CNN model, and BGRO model. The base architecture with all layers you can see on the screen. And also for embeddings, we used uh, Vertovec pre-trained, Glow pre-trained, FastText pre-trained, and we also trained by ourselves sentiment learned embedding that were specifically, specifically finds sentiment um, correlation between words. And the model based license, as I said, it builds TMB Groom CN. So for experiments, we collected a few data sets. Uh, they, it is five data sets that were or different, contain different information and contains different labels. In summary, uh, there were 12 unique emotion labels, uh, so, and uh, more than 100 uh, samples. So, as you can see, these data sets are kind of different in meaning of the sizes, of the represented emotions, and uh, the balanced classes. And for experiments, we uh, used the uh, training hyperparameters. We used these hyperparameters for all for all of our uh, models to make it clear that our models work, uh, how our models work with on the same hyperparameters, and we use F1 score as metric to collect our results. So results for a BLSTM we, that we collected, we found that the most, uh, the, the most appropriate way to classify emotions were uh, the pair of BLSTM with work to work embedding. And we understand that it uh, provide good results for uh, balanced data set like ECR, Crowdflower data set, and also it, it showed good results on Stack Overflow data set. Uh, CNN with CNN shows uh, worse result. Uh, the results of the BLSTEM and BGRU uh, were better. But uh, as we can see, the best way for CNN in context of our collected data set was using sentiment embedding. And the last one, big rule, and the big rule, uh, the most, uh, the best performance were shown by glove embedding. And as we can see, the glove embedding uh, provide much higher results for for collected data sets than CNN and the most of the embedding with BLSTM. So let's sum up all our results and as we can see that we can uh, we can choose the two best models that we have uh, trained and experimented the first one is blstem with work to back and it shows good results uh, on the balance data sets like such as ecr and crowdflower so the classes are more balanced and for sparse data sets, the best performance was uh, done by BigRU and Glove Embedding. So if you wanted to uh, work with uh, data sets that have unbalanced classes, then choose BigRU with Glow. If your data sets are more, more clear and more balanced, then use BLSTM and work to work. So that's it for me and thanks for watching. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, what question? Um, I have some question. Um, you are studying uh, data set with English text. Uh, what do you think about how problems can, uh, can appear when we uh, study Ukraine or Russian text? Yeah, uh, 
sense for the question, uh, the most problems are that in our, firstly, you know, we should found such data sets because- Yes, it's a problem, of course. Yeah, <laughs> the, the most problem is to collect this data set. The second problem <laughs> is to clean up these data sets. And for yes. Ru Russian, uh, there are many, uh, how it is, uh, like not articles, like proverb, proverb, mm, proverb how it is called. Uh, Some text? Mm, yeah, it's Some like a lot of idioms. Yeah, it's a, like a, a lot of grammar constructions that are, that could change the sense and the emotional context of the sentence. For example, we can set the one, uh, the same, the same sentence in Russian, just, uh, ch just change one, one uh, part, one little part, and so on. This another, this uh, the sentiment, the emotions are. Totally, totally another one. Different, yes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for yeah. your presentation. Very interesting. I have a question. Oh, okay. have, please, please. Cost. In what space do you classify emotions? What is the emotion space you work in? Uh, yeah, uh, we, emo we collected, we were in, uh, working with 12 emotions that were labeled by crowdsourcing in data sets that is base emotions that are contains anger let, let me show anger happy joy sadness fear and other not so not so popular emotions in text like a guilt shame hate natural and disgust so we were working with these labels and uh, these labels were uh, collected, uh, that uh, these labels were labeled in data set by crowdsourcing. Yeah. Is it linear space or categorical space? Are uh, these variables independent? Yeah. yeah, understand categorical space. Like yes, uh, we, we used a one hot encoding like for each of the emotion. So our one hot encoded vector has uh, uh, most um, from five to 12, uh, 12 elements. Thank yeah. you. Uh, 12 Thank elements you. of what? Of linear composition of these labels? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, one hot encoded vector, one hot encoder, zeros and ones. So the one is for uh, the the one is for the classified emotion. The zeros there is no such emotion. Yeah, like binary it. classification. Ah, mm. so you work in a cube of emotions, right? You you you're working in a binary cube, and th that's the entirety of this space. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We don't have any uh, time, unfortunately. And we should go to next presentation, maybe, unfortunately. Uh, OK, next presentation, terminology of communication linguistics in terms of indexing in information retrieval in the system, I say be slow. Uh, Al Alataran, are you here? Can we see you, Alataran? You are absent. Okay, next presentation. Uh, I see Larissa Slaska. Yeah? Oh, Larissa. yes. <laughs> ah, Larissa Slaska. Yes, we, uh, we ask you, please. Good afternoon. Doctor. Yes, okay, I'm sharing the screen to show the presentation. Please. Just a second. Something wrong. Here in my presentation. <clears throat> 
we don't see, we can see. Try again. I don't know why it's so slow. We can see. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Sharing a screen, maybe uh, in bottom of the screen, the bottle. Sharing the screen, screen demonstrates the screen. But mm -hmm. I think some problem is connection or something like this. But You should open, uh, firstly, you should open your presentation and then in Zoom, you should share your screen. Firstly, you should open. You yes, open the presentation is open. I can... Yes, I open the presentation. I think... Yes, yes, I think... Some problems with Skype. Maybe someone can, instead of me, I'm preparing Maybe okay, 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 okay. Yes. Because of no. technical issues. Okay. Uh, now we are going to yeah. yes. We are going to look at the next presentation and Marisa, we are prepared. Uh, decide your problem. Next presentation, Eugene Parfenov, we ask you. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So first, my I presentation has nothing. Mm -hmm. My topic has nothing to do with natural language processing. Unfortunately, it but is. we can see. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. It's interesting. It is about Please. knowledge, knowledge presentation in machine languages quite the opposite of natural languages. Okay, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem we are facing is that um, all modern general purpose languages, well, functional and imperative procedural languages, object-oriented languages, all of them basically, they share the one inherent problem, one inherent ugly side of the language is their data language. They share all of them share one very old, very outdated data language that formulates uh, any data that the program works with in terms of memory management. So all this language of variables, arrays, matrices, whatever you have in your language, it is all formulated, all in all, in the end of the day, it is formulated in terms of memory management. You decide how many bytes to allocate and how many bytes to dispose of. And that's it, that's, that's basically all you have. You cannot formulate your knowledge, you cannot formulate your data in terms of your knowledge. You cannot formulate it in uh, pragmatic terms, in terms of the domain knowledge, which with you work. Uh, so it creates a disconnect between the goal of your software and the tools with which you formulate your software. Even though recently we developed languages that allow very, very complicated structural data and employ automatic garbage collectors. So we don't, we don't <laughs> bother with allocation memory for strings anymore, right? for example. So strings are okay now. We have tuples, we have sets in very many, very popular modern languages, so Camel, Python. They all work with sets and tuples very well. Still, they inherit the, the basic uh, type system from the older languages. And this basic type system formulates your data in terms of memory management. So even though you employ automatic memory management, you still formulate your data in terms of memory management as it used to be manual like decades ago. So the goal of, the, of my proposal is to create a data language for general purpose languages, 
uh, that would formulate your data in pragmatic terms, in terms of the domain knowledge. So you can create your own type system based on a pragmatic type system that allows you to formulate your data in the terms, well, I repeat myself, forget it. Uh, so this uh, this slide you see on your screen, uh, it's the first example of this language. It's in the middle of my presentation, but we don't have time to go through all the slide to for all the slides. So we see the most important slide. It shows you equivalence between data scheme above and the data definition in the proposed language. Uh, you can see here that we successfully hammered down hammered down the very complex structure into a quote-unquote linear presentation of a machine language. Uh, the major feature of this language is that it treats higher order relations. Ah, relations, yes, we, uh, we use a relational model for knowledge representation for data representation because it's all encompassing it is complete it allows you to do everything it allows you to represent everything so every bit of real life knowledge that is speakable is representable by a system of relations by a hierarchy of relations it wasn't it wasn't done yet because of the sql sql perverted sql actually destroyed the relational model. If I, if, I, if I mention relational model, you immediately recall SQL. Oh, SQL is the implementation of relational model. Well, first half of my presentation proves that SQL is not an implementation of a relational model because it does not implement the most important, the crucial feature of the of relational model, that is, a relation can be a domain of another relation. So in a relational model, vast majority of relations are higher order relations, uh, which are relations between other relations. It is absolutely impossible in SQL. SQL prohibits that. So it is a ruin. It's not an implementation of a relational model. It is a ruin of, implement, of, of a relational model. And this is, Another problem we are aiming to solve with this language proposal, we want the world's first appropriate implementation of a relational model and also to make this relational model integratable inside a general purpose language so that to make it possible to speak about your data, no matter how complex and no matter how deeply structured, uh, to speak it fluently in the context of a of a general purpose program formulated on a general purpose language. And that's the example how you could do that. So I think we successfully hammered down this very complex problem in a, in a very thin, very linear language. So what, what, what else would be appropriate to mention in such a brief summary? Uh, Yes, our language is absolutely opposite to SQL. It is based on unifications, such as in Prolog, for example, but greatly enhanced by comparison with Prolog. Uh, it is based on sets of tuples, and we get rid of positional references. We don't have any positional references at all. Still, we manipulate with tuples. And tuples and sets are not types of the language. It's very important. They are, not, uh, they are not part of the type system of the language. They are operators on the, that act on type system. So tuplim, composition of a tuple, construction of a tuple, and union, construction of a set, are operators that act upon type system. They are not types which is opposite to all modern data languages. So ask your questions. I, 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 I'm willing to answer anything. I 
I have questions. I understand that your uh, language is opposite to SQL, but uh, how about uh, such kind of uh, ontology language well, for example? Uh, which language? Say it again. Well, ontology. Ontology well language. I, I don't remember. Language, ontology. Ont so, I, I am absolutely, uh, I, I, I beg your pardon, I'm absolutely unaware of that language. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about ontology language. I know about ontologies a little bit. It's a buzzword of people who who are not very engaged in actual practical programming. Yeah, but ontology language in order to describe uh, knowledge, in order to describe knowledge and this kind of, uh, this language uh, describes some relations, domain, some kind well, of relations for uh, between entities or something. Yes, else. in a big but, picture, mm -hmm. in a big picture, it is the same. Yes, <laughs> but we, 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 are, we are getting down, we are getting down to earth, we are getting down to actual formulation, down to lexemes and syntactical constructs. So we, 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 we have completed a language that you can put inside your general purpose language. Mm -hmm. Yes, understand. Thank you. But it's your uh, opinion on this kind of language. It's interesting. Thank you. Uh, and maybe... by the way, we uh, we propose um, a physical means of implement of implementation. So uh, I, I prove that higher order relations can be represented in data storages right now using using already developed means of data storage. So we don't need to invent. We don't need any breakthrough in um, in the field of uh, data storage in the field of databases. The only problem is that uh, uh, storing uh, higher order relations uh, in uh, modern day databases is simply prohibited on a higher level, on the level of the language. It is not prohibited on the level of implementation. So physically, yes. it is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I uh, th This is the slide. So. Interesting. Thank you. Any question? Other question? No. Thank you very much again for your presentation. Uh, it's not about uh, natural language, but it's about knowledge. It's very interesting. Uh, thank you very much. And now for this um, Zoom meeting, we uh, skipped. Uh, we skipped three presentation and. Uh, we are going to ask them for next uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, that will be uh, exactly it's uh, three, uh, three and fifty, three and fifty. The next uh, Zoom meeting, and uh, we try to start with presentation of Al by Ala Taran if uh, she was, she is prepared. She is prepared now. And then uh, we uh, skipped presentation, presentation Alex Krupi and oh, yeah, yeah. and Larissa uh, Alataran and Larissa uh, Slavitska. Larissa Slavitska, yes. And, uh, correct, correct. Because yes. I think we have technical problems. Yes, something happened with Zoom. But maybe you can uh, present you uh, studying without presentation if you can't open your presentation. Okay, or maybe I can send to Irina Bizugla. She is our co-author and she can open presentation. Yes, here. That it I will can... be good and maybe we okay. uh, are starting with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are waiting you exactly in three 50, 350. Okay. Thank you. A cup of coffee. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Attending. Yes. <clears throat>